This is a Boogaboo B that we've gotten in for a general overhauling, uh, which means that we're going to wash all of the textiles and we're going to check over the chassis for any problems and lubricate it and uh, clean it up. Uh, just try to make it as new and well functioning as possible. Uh, so we're going to start today by removing the textiles so that we can put them in the machine for a watch. I'm going to take the seat off so it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, we're going to start by removing the canopy. Uh, down at the bottom on either side should be some elastic bands that you're going to need to pull off of some clips. Uh, this is a first generation, but uh, most things the same throughout the generations. There might be some small variations on their stroller, but uh, more or less the way you disconnect the fabrics and so on is the same. Uh, we're going to turn it then on its side. We're going to start disconnecting these buttons. They run all around the back side. You can just go ahead and pull that off of the seat. There we go. There we are. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pull out the metal ribs. Uh, there's another elastic band here. And if you disconnect all the rest of the canopy first, it should be a little bit easier to pull out these uh, metal ribs. Another elastic band. Once you've uh, disconnected it on one side, you can really just pull out uh, the ribs, or you can take it all the way off and then do it. It's a long time since anybody did any maintenance to this stroller, so everything feels pretty tough uh, to pull on. There we go. And we can move on to the seat. The seat is also attached here with uh, a bunch of buttons, the same buttons from the canopy. So you want to disconnect all of those. move down to the uh, bottom of the seat now. I'm just going to pull this up over the end. There are a couple more of these elastic straps to disconnect. And right here at the back at the bottom are another couple of these elastic straps you're going to have to pull out. Okay. And then it's a matter of getting the safety belts through. So the uh, bottom one, relatively easy. You just turn it sideways and pull it right through the slit. And then with relation to the other buckles, you're actually going to have to detach the uh, plastic clips that hold these in place uh, in order to pull them through. So when you're disconnecting these, if you look, you'll see a couple of uh, plastic um, uh, slots or slits on either side of the button. And these are actually uh, indicators of where the little pegs stick out that poke under the lip of the black plastic part of the seat this and hold it in place. So you just want to pop those off and you can push them through. I'm just using a butter knife, but a flathead screwdriver will of course work quite nicely as well. 
insert it under and just twist it. Just be careful not to break them. These ones at the bottom are for the uh, side belts. You can pull the buckles now all the way out if you don't want to give them a wash as well but I'll just throw the whole thing in the washing machine. So then the last uh, fabric element is going to be the shopping basket. So the shopping basket is quite a lot easier than the rest and it's all a matter of velcro. There are these longer velcro flaps that go over this uh, belt. Uh, you don't need to remove the belt itself. If you have some mildew on it then uh, it is possible to do so. Uh, if you need, feel you need to, then leave us a comment and we'll uh, cover how to remove that belt. But otherwise, it's just a matter of opening up these flaps. And then there are three points in the front. two Velcro straps in the back. So we're gonna put these in a machine and we're gonna wash the whole thing on 40 degrees, uh, just with an average uh, amount of soap. And uh, that generally tends to work for us. We uh, pr prefer not to go over 40 degrees uh, because you can damage any plastic elements that might be inside uh, stroller fabrics. Okay, uh, first thing we're gonna do in relation to the chassis itself is to give it a general wash. And what I'm going to use is a spray bottle that's filled uh, partially with a generic cleaning solution and uh, mostly with water. And I'm going to use that and a towel and just try to get away uh, the most of the mud and uh, dust and stuff. This will uh, allow me to easy, more easily see what areas I need to focus on a little more specifically uh, when cleaning up and uh, lubricating and fixing the stroller. Uh, what I'm going to do first then is to remove the front wheels and do them separately. So I'm just going to give them a good spray down and a good wipe. I'm going to move on and do exactly the same thing on the chassis itself. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to do then is to lubricate the various mechanisms on the stroller. Uh, for the most part, what you're going to want is a silicone spray. Um, we are also going to use a little bit of this CRC 556, uh, it's essentially WD-40, but that's only going to be pretty much for the ball bearings on this stroller, uh, because the ball bearings is metal, and so it'll function better 
just with this, whereas everything else is pretty much either plastic or metal and plastic, uh, in which case that extra protective coating that you get from the silicon is quite nice. Um, the last sort of lubrication I'm going to use at the very end is this food industry grease, uh, and you could also use a silicon putty, and we're only going to use that for the front area, putting on the axle where the front wheels uh, slap in place. That's because this is thicker and provides a certain amount of traction in addition to lubricating, uh, which helps with uh, wobbly wheel issues that can occur with the B. Um, but in any case, we're going to start with the ball bearings with the CRC 556. On the front wheels, you want to hold them on this at an angle on the side because the bearing is inside the wheel itself. And you want to spray so that it gets like over the ball bearing and gravity can push it down inside. You're going to want to leave it for, uh, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds, enough time for it to, to sort of work its way in. Then you can turn them over and do the other. Give them a little bit of a spin here and there. Help that uh, oil to get down inside the ball bearings. Okay, then in relation to the wheels, you can use the silicon spray when it comes to the uh, locking mechanisms. So give it a nice spray here at the top and around the push buttons as well. You can always work the mechanisms a little bit to help to uh, to uh, move that lubricant around all of the working parts. Okay, we can move on to the chassis. Um, I'm going to again start with the ball bearings. You want to turn the stroller on its side, I'm just hitting these back wheels now, and we'll get that top, top ball bearing first. And same under here. Let it sit for about 10 seconds to uh, work its way down inside, and then flip it over. If a good deal of hair has worked itself around these wheels, you might want to uh, work at removing that either just by pulling it out or by uh, removing the axles and then uh, getting all that hair off. Okay. Here is the um, suspension system and the moving part here is going to be where the wheel connects here. You can do that with some silicone. Flip this on its side again. I'm going to try to get this brake system a bit. And uh, you can just flip it over and do the opposite side as well, of course. And in here where these pins slide. Uh, this here is also a good place to lubricate. And if you're having brake issues, uh, very often the pin is catching on the edges of this channel here. Uh, so it's always good to lubricate right there inside that channel. And of course, flip it over and do the other side as well. I won't do that on video right now. Okay, in relation to the folding mechanism, you wanna hit all these little areas where there are cracks, where the joints move. And if you have one of the generations that has these uh, connectors for the arms, then you'll want to get in there as well. That'll make uh, seat removal a lot more easy. Okay, in relation to the top, I don't use any lubricant. The reason being, at least on this uh, generation, because the handle and the handle height adjustment is held in place uh, via a rubber pad. 
So the friction against the bar is very important and uh, you don't want the lubricant to mess with the friction that uh, occurs there. On uh, later models, this uh, handle functions via a number of hacks in the back side of the handle and it's not a rubber pad but it's a plastic piece that slots into those. In that case, you can use some uh, silicon spray uh, inside these mechanisms as well and you'll get that, me that uh, mechanism to function a bit smoother. When it comes to lubrication of the seat, uh, the Boogaboo seat is quite complex. It has a lot of mechanisms and they are virtually all plastic. Uh, there is some difference from generation to generation, but you're essentially going to want to well oil all of the moving parts with a silicon spray, um, including this internal uh, bit that runs from the top um, down through some channels and activates the seat positioning any sort of uh, seat removal mechanisms that you might find on it. And of course, the discs on the sides. Silicon spray, essentially, uh, in addition to lubricating, it hardens on top of the plastic and provides a protective layer. And so it's very good uh, to be somewhat generous with this, with the B seat as you really do want all of those mechanisms to function uh, optimally. Now we're going to move on to cleaning the chassis and we're going to start with the wheels and uh, what I'm going to use for all of the white parts on the wheels uh, as well as the aluminum parts on the chassis and the white parts on the chassis is a combination of a microfiber sponge with nail polish remover. Uh, you're just going to wet the microfiber sponge a little bit and then we're going to start rubbing. If you have a lot of um, orange brown uh, rust stains, say from uh, rusty ball bearings that have leaked out against the white plastic, then instead of nail polish remover you can actually use WD-40 uh, in combination with this um, um, microfiber sponge. Uh, but otherwise I recommend using the nail polish remover and it will clean up the uh, wheel nice and white again. It's very nice on the white plastic elements of Boogaboo in general. This uh, part is a bit more of a rubber, so it doesn't quite get as white as the plastic, but it will also have a nice effect. gets a bit of a gray tone, but uh, it still gets a bit cleaner. So you would all could also use this combination of the uh, microfiber sponge and nail polish remover if you have any scuff marks on the uh, black plastic, but you don't want to just rub it over all of the black plastic as it's a, quite a, an abrasive combination and it'll remove some of the surface veneer uh, from that plastic, uh, making it look a little bit white. But if you have any paint that has, uh, you know, you bang your stroller up against a wall and it leaves these paint scuffs, there's a little bit here, I don't know if you can see it, but that will, will come off quite nicely as well. Uh, when it comes to the rust, uh, for like a surface rust, you can take a balled up piece of aluminum and rub it away. Uh, if you have deeper rust, in particular on this stroller, when it comes to um, some of the, uh, the rivets, the rivet heads, then you might want to use Rust Eater. And uh, we have several videos that deal with uh, removing rust via the product Rust Eater, uh, which is essentially like an acid grease that you can spread over metal. So uh, if you're interested in doing that, if you have a lot of rust, uh, rust problems with your stroller, uh, just search our channel for rust removal and you'll find several videos that will help you with that. Uh, like this one, for example, is very rusty. So this will remove some of the surface rust, but it won't take it all away. The aluminum foil will make it 
quite a lot shinier. Is, uh, the major part of the cleaning on the wheels and um, or at least one of them and I'll move on to the chassis now. Okay then we're also going to use the nail polish remover and microfiber sponge combination as I said on the metal. Now this won't remove any actual scratches uh, but it'll remove a lot of surface dirt and it'll take any sort of uh, stuff that's inside those scratches away, which makes them a bit more invisible. If, however, at the bottom of the scratches you have uh, rust, then you can use Rust Eater uh, in order to remove that rust. I'm also going to do these white plastic elements. Okay, uh, we're going to put the front wheels back on, and as I said, we're going to use a bit of this uh, food industry grease. And I'm just going to put it on the axles, and it'll all get spread around as I pop the wheels into place. There we go, give it a spin wipe away that excess afterwards. So that's an overview of the steps we uh, generally take when we are overhauling uh, one of these boob boobies. Uh, we hope this video has been useful to you. If you have uh, any questions, want to see any of the parts of the process in a bit more depth, we do have several other videos on our channel that deal with all the, the different stages of this process. Uh, if it's not always for a Boogaboo B, then you can search other Boogaboo models. Uh, process will be the same with, with cleaning uh, and lubrication to a large extent. So uh, we hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has been, we ask you to subscribe as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. Thank you.